We've all seen the shows about hoarding, but you've never heard from the children of hoarders until now because they're too ashamed to even open their doors and reveal the dirty secrets, literally, of their parents. And so tonight they're coming clean about something even more heartbreaking. As more and more junk piles up, do they get pushed out? Life as a teenager is often filled with chaos and confusion. And for 17-year-old Paige and 15-year-old Blair, it's bursting at the seams. The house they share with their mother, Bonnie, is overflowing with three-foot-high piles of clutter and the feelings of shame and resentment that accompany them. For years, the two girls have kept their mother's compulsive hoarding a secret from neighbors, friends, and even family. Hidden inside is a disaster zone. Each room, barely recognizable. Okay. This is the living room. This is supposedly a dining room and office area. This would be, there'd be a dining room table right here. It's there, but can't find it. Aquarium back there, can't find it. Kitchen, disaster. This is the kitchen? Oh my gosh. Okay, next, my bedroom. Okay. Wow, it's really hard to walk in here. Yeah. I don't know where. Here's the garage. Oh my goodness, wow. The only touch of average adolescence in the girls' bedroom, the Jonas Brothers poster on the wall. Their daily lives have been defined by the ever-presence of the mess and the total absence of the normal. There is no clean surface for the teenagers to put on their makeup, brush their teeth, or do their homework. Picking clothes for school is almost impossible. How do you keep track of things? You don't. <laughs> you, we lose stuff constantly. Like you, you put it down and you go somewhere and you come back and it's gone. It's very irritating. It makes you very angry. It's kind of really frustrating. The cluttered kitchen sink no longer has hot water. So they wash the dishes in the shower. Meals are cooked in this microwave in the garage. The only place to sit is the living room couch, so that is where they eat every meal and try to ignore the rising tide of junk around them. You just get used to it after a while, so it's not like, oh my God, th this is crazy, why are we doing this type thing? Right. It's just like natural to us now. But natural as well is the feeling of being different and living a secret life with no sleepovers or pizza parties. In fact, both experience doorbell dread, the fear of having other people see inside their home. So do you have friends over? <laughs> Can you have people over? No. No. no, 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 no one's allowed in our house. We can't really tell them why. We just say, you know, right. I'm sorry, we can't let you in. Paige and Blair may feel alone, but they are not. It's estimated there are some 10 million hoarders in the United States and millions of children living in the wreckage with them. Going into the home, your eyes are burning, your nose is running, it smells horrid. Dr. Suzanne Chabot is a psychologist who is studying the children of hoarders. She is one of the on-site experts of A&E's hit show, Hoarders. What kind of impact does that have on a child to grow up in, a, in, in conditions like this? It's extremely stressful. And the more severe the hoard and the earlier it starts in the child's life, the more distressed they're going to suffer. One of the most severely hoarded homes Dr. Chabot has encountered is this one in Louisiana. It is labeled a Category 5 hoard. That's the worst. Musician Jason Brunet and his older sister were raised here by their mother, Augustine. I don't ever remember it being clean. Ever? Ever. After years of avoiding visits, his return to his childhood home is motivated by crisis. The family fears the house will be condemned by the city. The hoarder show has arranged to clean it out. This isn't exactly how you, how you create normal human beings. The cleaning crew removed 8,000 pounds yeah. of garbage and junk from your mom's house. Yeah. I mean, they had to get it out with shovels because it was so dense. And on the bottom, it was decaying. It, was, it had turned to soil. Was it like a time capsule of sorts? It was. I mean, I, I found a rattle that I remember playing with. Among the things they found when they were clearing your mom's house out was toddler diapers from when you were a toddler. That astounds me. I'm 30 years old. But perhaps most astounding is Jason's lack of alarm at some of the discoveries in the excavation. 
two dead cats. Oh, God. I was just like, oh, we found another one. Is Didn't it? surprise you anymore? No, I just feel like I've been kind of desensitized to it. Can a person become that desensitized? Yeah, I think so. It's what I've known my entire life. But he remains haunted by certain memories of daily life in a childhood of staggering filth, filled with odors so strong they were almost beyond belief. Talking about the refrigerator um, is the most uncomfortable thing about the whole situation for me. Why? Because it was full of rotting food. She would buy me cans of soda, but the smell of the rotting food would be absorbed into the can. And every sip you took, the smell from the can would just fill my, my nose and my skin is kind of crawling right now. There was a period of time when I couldn't go into my room at all because there were so many fleas. I would just walk in and my leg would be covered in fleas. And sometimes when I was sleeping, roaches would crawl on me and wake me up. How old were you when you realized this is something that's abnormal, this is a problem? Third and fourth grade when kids started making fun of me and then they started making up a song about how bad I smelled. I don't, thankfully, don't remember the words, but um, I remember how I felt. Pretty bad, I'm sure. Pretty bad, yeah. I guess. No, was she on you to brush your teeth, no, wash your face, no, comb your hair? No, none of that. I actually do remember a time where I didn't brush my teeth. I was like, well, she's not making me brush my teeth, so I just won't do it. What happens to it, a child when they grow up in an environment where nobody is saying, brush your teeth, take a bath, do your homework? When nobody tells you to do these things, you don't learn that you're that important. And the overriding message that these children get is that my stuff, no matter how disgusting it is, no matter how bad it stinks, it's more important than you. Even when children escape the horde, that message can still resonate. Jason was 13 years old when conditions got so horrendous, Child Protective Services removed him from the house. He lived his teenaged years with his older sister. All my mother had to do to get me back was keep her house clean, and she couldn't. Do you feel like your mom chose the junk and the garbage over you? At the time I did, I guess I felt abandoned.